Hey everyone, Paul Savage from savageuniversity.net here and today we're going to be talking about how to sell on Amazon for complete beginners in 2022. Really quick before we get started, I just want to let you know that I'm not like selling anything here. I'm just actually making a basic tutorial for people who want to get started. Um, so I'm going to be giving real steps that I've really learned over the past four years being an Amazon private label seller and then eventually evolving more into just a brand builder in general. I think the Amazon space has changed quite a bit and there's some important things that we need to bring up. There's quite a few videos about how to sell on Amazon in 2022, how to sell on Amazon period that I personally don't think are very accurate. So I wanted to update YouTube with my latest and greatest, I guess I sound like kind of a jerk saying that, but anyway, let's get into it. Maybe you think this is better than the other videos. I know that it is, so let's get started. So I think it's important that we start with a very clear definition of exactly what it is we're doing here as brand builders on Amazon and what I'm going to be teaching you today because there's several different ways that you can sell on Amazon in general. So the first one might be wholesale, right? So in this situation, we're gonna be working with supply to buy other companies products for a discount so you might have a lead that a supplier has like oh we have 50 uh, office jet pro 6978s for a hundred dollars um, and it's gonna cost ten dollars to ship uh, so and then there's gonna be Amazon fees it's like okay I can sell these and I know I can make 30 bucks each one that I sell uh, so if they have 50 I can make fifteen hundred dollars if I order all of those in profit right? And I'll sell those out. I'm going to list them here. I'm not creating my own listing. I'm not creating my own brand. I'm simply just ordering existing products and selling them for a profit. Now, arbitrage. People confuse this one with wholesale a little bit because in this situation, we're not working with suppliers necessarily, but we're working more with retail stores. So there's retail arbitrage, there's online arbitrage. So you're working with retailers to buy, same principle, we're buying another company's product for say they have it on sale for um, you know, $39.99 at Walmart. So we could buy five of those and then list them and know that we can sell them for 57. And lastly, what I'm going to be talking to you about today. So this is brand building, right? A lot of people will call this private label, but I'm actually trying to move away from the term of private label because I want to build products that are entirely exclusive to my brand. I don't want somebody to be able to go and order my exact product and list it on Amazon as my direct competition. So I'm referring to it as brand building, not private label. It's a similar model. However, in this situation, I'm building a fully customized exclusive product to my brand. Whereas typically you could go to alibaba.com and order any product that any private labeler is selling, make a slight adjustment and sell it for a little bit less. So in this situation, we're looking at a brand that I think is doing brand building very well. It's called Home and Hadfield. So if we pull up Helium 10 here, we can see that this watch display case is making $50,000 per month on this one specific SKU, and that's just one product on their store, All right? So what they did is they saw that there was a need Right, so maybe they saw a watch display case was being searched on Amazon. They created a fully new, fully customized product that they made themselves or worked with a manufacturer um, to create specifically for them that they can't sell legally to anyone else. Then they listed it, branded it well, created beautiful packaging, paid for outstanding photography. Um, they obviously understand who their core customer is. Right, That's a very giftable product for men. Um, for businessmen, for people who enjoy watches, finer things. Um, so they're kind of catering to, oh, we're the top product as a gift from a partner to their boyfriend or to their husband, right? Uh, they're also catering directly to those people that are looking for the watch display case themselves. So they have all that marketing figured out. Um, let's dive into a little bit of how you would go about doing this from scratch, right? Because it obviously starts somewhere. I want to kind of follow along their journey and talk about how I think that they saw this from the beginning and grew it to be a $50,000 per month product. Um, but really quickly, just to show you the potential of this, let's go ahead and head over to their store and just see collectively within the past couple of years how much they've been able to do in revenue. So I've been following along with this brand for a little while. I found them and it was a product that I was interested in imitating at one point, but I've since changed directions. When we're looking at this seller, we can see their total revenue is actually $83,000 per month. And they just started in 2020. Uh, if you look over here, we can actually see that the creation date of their earliest listing is the 17th of October in, oh, sorry, 
the 23rd of October in 2023. That's when they created this listing here that's now their most popular listing. And not by chance, if we follow through their next oldest listing, uh, it's their next most popular listing, right? So they took what was working for them extremely well and it's funny, I don't know if some of you noticed this when you're looking at the images, but what do you notice that's different about this product right here? Sorry, I like zoomed over it with the blue blob. And then this product right here, blue blob again. The difference is nothing. They just cut slots into it. So I guess that is a difference. It's not nothing. This one is for watches. This one is for knife display. Collectively, those two products make about $60,000 per month. And they were able to do that within 24 months from starting. So now that you understand the business model, let's start going over the first steps of how to get started working on this. Now, these are action steps that I have paraphrased from a book called 12 Months to a Million. I think I have it, it's, yeah, it's right there. I can't really take credit for anything that is in my brain. It's all just things that I've learned from other places. So obviously credit where credit is due. Um, I believe chapter three, there is some form of these questions and I've reworded them to be more relevant for what we're going to be talking about today. The first thing that you have to ask yourself when you're building a brand is who is your customer? Some examples that I've given here are CrossFitters, are they makeup artists, are they fishermen? Now, when you answer the que this question, be very specific and really pick a person that has a specific interest or a special interest, right? Something that they're enthusiastic about and something that's worth spending money on to them, right? You wanna be in a space where when you release product two and three, it's sequentially getting easier because product one brought you a lot of customers, they familiarized themselves with your brand, and now product two is almost just as meaningful because the area that it's being released in is an area where they're already spending money. So I specify that because we're not inventing products here. We're not going out and creating a market and creating you know, having to educate customers on why they need our product, they're already actively in this space. We're creating a better product for them that maybe their existing product has a pain point. So who is your customer? Um, let's go with fishermen for the rest of these because I'm an avid fly fisherman. Beep. What do they buy, right? List everything that this person buys. And if you can't list anything or you can only list one or two things, it's probably not the right market. And that's a good sign that you need to restart, pick a new person, go through the questions again. All of these questions are listed sequentially. So you need to go one and then two and then three and then four. There's seven of them, I believe. Um, you can't bounce around here, right? You have to start with a person. What do they buy? Go down the list. So in this case, we could say pliers, hooks, hook sharpeners, waders, wading boots, nets, right? We could keep going on fly lines and flies. We can go on that whole list and probably find a hundred more things if you wanted to sit here for three hours and let me list things. Um, I actively buy things for fishing every single month. And I can tell you right now that a lot of those things are not cheap, right? Fishermen, especially fly fishermen, love investing in their gear, love getting better gear, better stuff. So that's the kind of market that you wanna be in. So the same goes for people that work out most of the time, right? They have the belt, they have the gloves, they have the shaker bottle, they have the new pair of like leggings or whatever you would call those things that people wear under their shorts when they're working out. Um, leggings, I guess, leggings, right? So yeah, pick a person, pick three products, and list as many as you can, don't just list three. Three is the minimum. If you can't list three, it's not right. Which product do you want to focus on to create a version of or a great design that solves a problem they're having? So which one of those products is your keystone product? A keystone product in my mind is the product that supports all other products, right? This is the most important one. And if you get this, it's like a domino effect where they continuously go down the line of products and continuously return to your brand to buy more things. The first one must be the most important thing and have the most impact on that person's life. Now, does your customer buy similar products in this market or is this just a one-off product? And what I mean by that is do they buy similar products to the one we just listed as being the most important one, right? So is there a second and third that relates very closely to that first one, right? So an example of this might be if we create the world's best waders that are lightweight, breathable, and yet warm at the same time, Okay, now we can sell wading boots and we can sell wading socks and we could sell different belt sizes and different, you know, we can go down that list and accessories for the waders and things that clip on. 
there's a clear sight of at least three to five more products related to just that Keystone product. Now those technically in my mind don't count as new products, right? If I had waiters and then four or five things that attach to the waiters, those are all accessory items. They're unique SKUs, but technically I would say a new product is one that starts that line all over again, where you can re-accessorize onto that new product, if that makes sense. And then where does your customer get their information? This is a key point to figure out because we need to figure out how to get in front of these customers, right? Amazon sellers tend to limit themselves a lot and especially people just getting on Amazon, hearing the wrong information might go, oh, it's just Amazon, right? I'm just gonna list it there and that's it. No, we need to start building this brand out on Instagram, building it out on Twitter, if that's where they are, or maybe it's on Pinterest. Maybe you need to start writing blog articles that take you 10 minutes a day, but you can put out you know, three a week by the end of the week, every week, uh, with relevant high quality information about your space. Um, that's obviously gonna be hard if you don't know a lot about the space, which is why sometimes it's beneficial to pick something that you are passionate about. But above all, I prioritize the perfect market size with enthusiasts that have a problem with a product in their market over just something I'm passionate about. Number six would be how do you get predictable sales and repeat customers? Amazon's a great place to start for this. However, it is beneficial to eventually get the traffic onto your own platform, right? We wanna have a website that's doing a majority of our sales over Amazon because we now own that traffic, right? We can use that customer's information to email them with new promos. We can, we can call the customers with follow-up. We can send them down different funnels that we have. None of that, almost none of that can you do on Amazon, right? So it's a great place to start collecting sales, build that momentum, but long-term, I would say you do want another traffic source. Um, you do want another platform that you own so that you own the traffic. And then lastly, what are products two, three, and four, right? So not accessories to the first one, but what are the next things that you do, right? So maybe if you're selling waiters, then your next product is a net that utilizes some of the same materials or some of the same science behind why this these waders are so comfortable to you to make a net that's really comfortable for fish, really sustainable, not hurting fish when you're doing catch and release, etc. So create that essentially profile and avatar for the brand of we want to be sustainable, we want to be environmentally conscious, we want to be what what is that thing that you're representing? Make sure that lives through all of the products. So now that you understand exactly the questions you're supposed to be asking yourself and what that line of action steps looks like, let's digest what Holm and Hadfield did and figure out how they came to grow a $80,000 per month brand in just two years. So who is their customer? Question number one, who is your customer? Watch enthusiasts men's jewelry enthusiasts, men who like to wear jewelry. That That's relatively simple in that regard. It's like, oh, it's a watch stand and it's obviously they like watches. However, what's that next layer? Who's buying it, right? So consumer versus customer. Customer is the man who, I, I guess it doesn't even have to be a man, but the person who is using the watch stand, the customer could be someone who bought it for them as a gift. So if you know that your friend is really into watches or your partner is really into watches, what's the best relevant thing to get them for their birthday or for Christmas? Well, you probably are gonna get them some kind of watch related product. So you might start typing around for gift ideas on Amazon and come across watch display. So we could say that their customer are watch enthusiasts, watch collectors that wanna display their watches, but also partners or friends of those people who wanna gift them that product. What are the products that those people buy? Well, let's do watch and see what comes up. So watch case watch repair kit, watch for men, watch box organizer for men. Okay, so just by knowing that we're targeting people who are interested in watches and interested in jewelry or interested in organization, right? We could go a couple different directions with that. We can put one of those keywords in there that we already know they're interested in, interested in and figure out what one of those things might be our keystone product. So if we type in watch box organizer for men, which was recommended to us from Amazon's search algorithm when we just typed in watch, we can see here that there are plenty of options, right? So from a typical private label like mindset, it might not be the best market because there's listings with thousands of reviews. 
it's going to be hard to rank against those listings if we're just selling one of the same things that's already on Alibaba. But with our new brand building mindset, we could ignore a lot of that. Okay, let's look at it from that mindset. Try and just erase a little bit of what your current convictions are about selling products online and hear me out here. Okay, you can always pick those convictions back up at the end of this video. Uh, when we look through here, what do we notice by a very large number of these? Almost all of them, right? There's some form of leather, there's some form of suede. Um, they, they generally have many, many um, areas for the watches. But what is the biggest thing that I'm noticing? People who collect watches or people who are enthusiasts probably like to see their watches out. And they there's a start, right? You can see through the top of them. However, when I'm looking at that, say it's up here, right? It's not going to be visible to me. They're not on display. Now look what happens when we scroll down and we find home and Hadfields. Simple change. Let's make the whole top part hold our favorite watches. And now they're in a acrylic case that's protecting them from dust, from particles, from rust, whatever it is. I can see them no matter where I am. So as someone, again, knowing your customer. If you're an enthusiast, you probably want to see the thing you're enthusiastic about. So just that connection to who your customer is, what they're thinking, what they want, you can make a better product that's not vastly different and not vastly harder to manufacture. And then let's go back to our questions list. Do they buy similar things in the market related to this Keystone product? A lot of people that buy watches or display watches might also be interested in pocket knives. Now, if we take a second to think about where this customer is getting their information, a lot of this is probably being sold on social media platforms, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, targeting, you know, Father's Day around Christmas time. I'm sure this does incredibly well. It's doing $50,000 a month now. It probably does a hundred something thousand dollars a month in Q4 for gift reasons. How are they getting predictable sales? Well, clearly they're getting predictable sales on Amazon. And lastly, what are products two, three, and four? Well, already kind of discussed that, but knife holder, they have different sizes of this product. So they have a new product that I think just kind of launched, which is a vegan leather case version of the watch holder. We have the single watch holder. So they're, they're kind of doing what they did well the first time, just expanding it out, making more SKUs. That's pretty much it from the branding perspective of what they're doing. But then how do you actually go and do that, right? That's Theoretically, that's great, but now what are the actual steps that I need to take as a beginner to go and do something like that? I just, I'm overwhelmed and I don't know where to start. And honestly, if you're stuck, I would just start with a list of hobbies and interests or just think of things that you're interested in personally. Are you a skateboarder? Do you have expertise in mountain biking? Are you a fisherman? Are you a guitarist? Any one of those things could work in this situation. Keep in mind, however, you don't have to be interested in the product. You don't have to be your customer. You can be an entrepreneur who sells things that you don't personally use, and you could just be someone who's interested in improving an issue in a specific marketplace. Go on to a subreddit and ask a question. Hey guys, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm looking to start a product here. Uh, what do you think about this? Can you comment on some of these issues? What are some problems that you're having? How can I help you? How can I be of service to you? Then lastly, start an Instagram, right? Start an Instagram for the brand that you're going to be building and start bringing the customer along for the journey. Everyone wants to wait until they have a product, yet when they have a product and they finally launch, it's too late. There's no one to launch to. Start building the brand before you build your first product it doesn't really make much sense to start with a product and then try and get people on board after. Start with the people, build the relationships, get in touch with influencers early, put in the hours talking to your customers, and then build the product for them with all that great input that you've built, um, that you've got over the past few months with the several hundred, several thousand followers you've built from you know putting in your work, creating valuable content and then you have a beautiful knockout launch. Whether it's on Amazon or your personal website, the customers know the trouble you went through to get there, they know that you listened to them, you built the product for them, you built it with them, they feel like they're a part of the journey, they're a part of this new small brand, they'll be happy to purchase from you. Once you've talked to your customers, you have the information, head over to um, have someone make a prototype for you, right? Create just the 3D rendering, get something that feels real, something to get you a little bit further down the line. Don't stagnate, keep moving forward. The important thing here is not explosive growth, 
it's consistently building a steady foundation and moving a little bit closer to your goal, getting 1% better every day. So get the rendering made, draw your product so that you can start working with manufacturers to create a prototype of your product. Keep in mind something like a coffee maker with new tech is probably going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars to create, where something like the new wooden watch display might just cost you $2,000 to create a completely new product. Um, I've had fully customized wooden products that have only cost me a few thousand dollars where this type of product did not exist at all. Then I create a new version of it completely from scratch that no one else can order. Once you know what it is you're creating and you have a rendered version of that, a sketch, something to illustrate what you're trying to communicate, go ahead and head over to thomasnet.com to try and find a local manufacturer for your product. I always recommend that you try and start local. Um, you don't necessarily have to end there because sometimes it's not going to work out, but you'll never end up with a made in the US product or end up with a um, very quick lead time, local, easy to ship product if you don't start looking there. Keep in mind as we're not necessarily private labeling, and we're brand building, we're creating our own product from scratch. You don't need to follow the conventional rules of just going to Alibaba. You can start with any manufacturer. So you can actually go to Google and try and find manufacturers. You can go to ThomasNet and find US manufacturers. Or just like the old days, you can go to alibaba.com, look up a watch display case, and try and work with one of these manufacturers to build something custom for you. Um, that is not out of the question either. And sometimes it might be the route that is worth taking. Back to good old Fiverr here. Once you've designed your product, you found your manufacturer, you're gonna to need to design your packaging. I always recommend that you go with a beautiful custom box. Don't just put your product that you worked so hard on in an unbranded box that completely defeats the purpose of what we're doing. We want the customer to receive our product and be absolutely amazed by the experience of simply opening it and remember that, right? When you get your, your first iPhone, or not even your first one, just a new phone in general, that box, that box is satisfying. We remember that box. And some people even keep the box, even though it's just a little white box, it's built well, it has a very crisp, clear image of the product on it. And the experience of opening it and taking each layer out where it's the phone first, and then it's the cord, et cetera, that is something that's undervalued in private label. And I think if you can create an amazing experience with your product at first sight, that customer is then much more likely to go and leave you a positive review, suggest you to friends, buy you as a gift for other people, etc. And then once you've designed your packaging and you've sent that over to your supplier or to your package um, supplier to have that made and your products packed, well now it's time to get some photography of the product. Don't cheap out on photography, spend 500, spend 800, spend $1,000 on photography, even if you have to work a little bit harder at work, um, put off the launch a little bit longer. We don't want lackluster branding. We don't want lackluster photography. We're creating a brand, we're taking pride in the work that we're doing, again, goes back to don't let three to six months of hard work get washed away because you spent $200 on photography and not $700 on photography. And then lastly, it's time for launch, right? I imagine most of you will be starting on Amazon. You can simultaneously start on your website as well. I recommend always having a website for your brand. So if people wanna look it up, they get familiar with it. The older website is, the more valuable that it becomes to, uh, Google, uh, like usually websites that are under a year old don't even start showing up anyway. So start it early, don't wait to do those things. Start your website, list it there, even if it's just linking back to the Amazon listing and they just get redirected to Amazon to purchase it but they came to your website, that's totally fine as well. Amazon's actually gonna reward you for sending outside traffic to Amazon so it's a win-win situation. Um, we come to launch, right? We put up our beautiful photos as they obviously have done. They got great photography taken. We write out our listing. We do our copywriting. Hey, head over to our old buddy Fiverr if you need some copywriting done. There's nothing you can't outsource if you don't know how to do it yourself. Um, and then it's launch time, right? We're grinding. We're letting people know on Instagram that, hey, the product just came out and a lot of you helped us design this. A lot of you are probably excited to order this. Um, here's the link to Amazon and here's a coupon for being awesome and supporting us while we didn't have our product ready yet. And then it's off to the races from there, right? Within the next three to six months, hopefully you can grow this to a product that's selling 25 to 50 units per day um, through advertising on Facebook, advertising on Instagram, um, advertising on Amazon, or 
You do it completely word of mouth and completely organic traffic from your own YouTube channel that you started for watch tips or like watch care tips or, you know, don't, don't limit yourself by just thinking, oh, I have to spend money. Uh, no, you can grow an incredibly valuable brand with no ad spend whatsoever. Watch Shark Tank. It happens all the time. People have a million dollars in sales. They've never spent a penny on ads and they started the business with $6,000. So trust me, uh, there's unlimited options there, but whether it's just you grinding on Instagram, grinding on YouTube, grinding on blog posts, um, there there is a way to sell your product. So don't get too caught up in the capital intensiveness of some of the bigger rat races like advertising. Um, so that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate you subscribing and liking. It helps the channel so much. So with that being said, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Later.